Hello everybody, this is Sebastian Furtado and welcome. Today, um, before I start talking about the perfume that I will be talking, which you already know, it's uh, Convient de Pluie. Um, I like to say that I was actually meaning to talk about the the trip uh, that I just came back from. I was in, in France for the last two weeks, pretty much. And I went to Paris and the south of France, um, to one city. and. Um, but I felt like talking about this perfume instead. Uh, there's not a huge haul. Um, I'm not one to make haul videos. Um, but um, there was, we didn't really purchase um, lots of perfumes. I barely purchased any perfume, which is very surprising. Um, but this trip was about, for, about something else. It had a different vibe than, than buying, you know, than focusing on shopping. It was more about focusing on on friends and time with family and it was it was a fantastic trip um, with lots of good time quality time with friends and family and um, but I will talk about it in the next video um, so today I would like to talk to you uh, talk with you about um, this beautiful perfume um, from 2007 called Convion de la Pluie um, let me see if I can cover my face so you can focus on the bottle more. No, it's hard. So, but yeah, that's that's it. Oh, okay, it's working now. Confusion la pluie. Okay. Um, this, like I said, is from 2007. Uh, unfortunately, it has been discontinued already. Um, this was a creation that's been credited to Thierry Vasset and um, Sylvain Delecour. At the time she was working um, at Guerlain. She was, um, I believe, um, part of the head of creation, you know, di um, yeah, creative director or something like that. Um, this is a beautiful perfume, um, I will spray. So yes, it's been discontinued. Uh, but it, it it became available available again in a, in a f can't remember how many years ago, but a few years ago, three, four years ago maybe, max. Um, it came back as a boutique exclusive to Brussels in Belgium. This is where I got mine from. A dear friend of mine went on a trip to Brussels, and he asked if there was anything I wanted, and I said, well, you know, they have Confine Pli, if you could please get me a bottle. So he did, and they engraved in at the. He brought it back to Paris because he was living in Paris at the time, and uh, the, he had it engraved at the 68 Champs Elysees. Um, yeah, so that's why it looks the way it does. Because normally um, it just comes with a sticker. So let me spray it. Okay, this is just a. Mm, okay, this is <laughs> this is so beautiful. Um, oh, this is beautiful. Um, it has something herbal in the opening. Um, rosemary, I think it's credited to be one of the lists, uh, one of the notes in the list of this perfume. And I get it. I do detect the rosemary quite beautifully in the opening. Um, orange blossom, bergamot too, which is pretty much a given. Yes, and it has this, it has this cold, crisp feeling of when the rain is coming because that's literally the name of the perfume, Convient la pluie, it's when the rain comes. Um, and, but I get this feeling of, okay, of that ozonic feeling this is not ozonic by any means um, I don't think it is in anyways but you know that there is that thing in the air that you smell that's that crisp cold um, I don't know how to what it is exactly but when the rain's coming um, especially here where we live you know that the weather changes and becomes cooler and crispy and then you, you kind of can tell that there's rain coming and you can you can smell it in this perfume in the very first 
um, moments of the opening, I, I can still smell it here. It's a feeling that I, I get very much. It's not it's not its sm a smell in specific. Um, at least not to me. To me, it's mostly a feeling, which to other people can definitely be a scent. Um, I still have not been able to detect that scent of you know, because some people say uh, my sister in law says she can smell when the rain's coming. I, I don't. I'm not quite there yet. I, I don't get that. Um, but I get the feeling, and it's very real in this perfume. And I think they were able to get it with the freshness of the rosemary and orange blossom and other some things that are in here. I don't know exactly what's in here, but so it is cool and crisp and slightly a little bit green herbal, but um, it has a creamy side from the orange blossom and floral and um, uh, what else? So it's slightly sweet. There's something sweet in here too, but not to my nose. It's not gourmand. You no, know, it's not the edible kind of sweet. To me, it's more like the, to the floral side of sweets. Um, but apparently, the pre praline praline is um, it's a note that's listed in this perfume. I don't really detect it because praline to me it's it's more like to the goes more like to the it's kind of a chocolate. You know, it's like a chocolate concoction of of other notes it's so it's a it's an accord praline um i don't really detect a lot of it here to me this is um this is a, it's not this is like there is a connection here with a pralonde which is a very classic perfume from galin from 19 between 1912 15 something like that and or it could be even older i'm not i don't remember right now but i think it's around that time Mm, and that, that crisp feeling, it's still here and it, it's lingering and it's just stunning. And I also get a, a slight connection with Iris Ganache. To me, and Iris Ganache came out around the same time as uh, Convient la Pluie 2007, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't talked about that one yet, but I will because uh, I love that perfume. Uh, Iris Ganache, it's, it's, it's like has a big strong relation with this one but it's sweeter it's it's sweet and it's it's definitely more to the gourmand the iris is you know it's it's much more amped up in here when there's iris also in this one but it's not the same kind of iris and it is a ganache but there's also i also get a, yeah i i, I just mentioned a perlonde and i get a, a quite a it's a strong connection with uh, a pralonde actually um but this is more i think it's a little bit more floral than a pralonde and it's it's more modern than a pralonde because a pralonde it's very very classic stunning stunning perfume i haven't talked to, i don't think i've talked about that one yet either but yeah this is um this is how i feel about it it's slightly sweet floral um crisp herbal tad a little bit green just a little bit green and heliotrope is an it's a flower that's listed in here too and i get it too it it, it plays a big um factor in this in this creation and um, it's stunning <sighs> i'm really sorry for talking about perfume that's been discontinued and it's quite hard to find but this is what i was feeling like wearing and I'm going back to work tomorrow, so I had to film something today. And um, yeah, uh, if you can somehow manage to find a sample of this, I highly recommend tr trying it um, because it is it's beautiful. But it's it's a kind of scent perfume that it's for people that love classic perfumes. If you're not into classics, um, you probably w wouldn't like it. So there's no no point in, in you know to bother unless you are one of those perfumes that one of those people that it's really much like you want the knowledge of what this what is it that this smells like um but but if you really want to smell it go for it because this is such a beautiful perfume um and that feeling of you know <laughs> when the rain's coming it's still here it's very crisp and it 
I get it in the back of my nose, that little crisp air feeling. It's like, yeah, like in the back here, so somewhere. Um, it's stunning. So yeah, I highly recommend trying it. Do not recommend blind buying. I never, I never do. I never recommend blind buying, unless you love the thrill of blind buying, which I understand. I've been there, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for your time, your attention. I really appreciate it. I uh, hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, day, evening, night, um, wherever you are in the world. And the world needs more beauty lovers. Bye.